What's not to love? You've got a whole universe staring you back in the face. You can look outside on any clear night and just enjoy how magnificent it is. What, what originally got me interested in astronomy was, well, there are a few things. One was when I was young, I remember watching uh, the Cosmos series, Carl Sagan's Cosmos series with my dad. And one of my favorite things was looking up at the night sky with my dad and thinking about whether there was anything living around those stars up there. Well, I was uh, shown how to find the North Star using the Big Dipper. And that was my first recollection of becoming involved in astronomy. When I was a little girl, I used to think the moon was following me. And I always loved the moon. And actually, it was the moon, I think, that got me interested in astrology. And then from there, I got interested in astronomy. I was a science teacher in Philadelphia School District, and um, Star Lab landed in my classroom. I think it was an event that changed my life. Uh, within a week, I had to learn all about astronomy. I had to teach the, the whole middle school uh, to find things in the sky. So Star Lab basically changed my entire life. I, I guess it was, I don't know, I was like, I don't know, a little kid, maybe about six, seven, eight, and Star Trek was in its first round of reruns on TV. And, and you know, you were hearing the science news about the early Mariner probes circling Venus and the Venera probes landing on Venus and the Mariner probe zipping by Mars, and you're watching Star Trek, and they're landing on other planets, and you're thinking, okay, this is where we're starting, and then by the time I'm a grown-up, I'll be walking around on planets with other people. I became fascinated with the sky. I used to come to the Franklin Institute many times, uh, and going through the course that they offered back in the 50s, I enjoyed being in the planetarium and seeing all those points of light and starting to be able to identify what some of those were thanks to the people who taught the course. I'm an astron astronomy educator. I have my own portable planetarium called Stars on the Move, and we go to schools and camps and scouts and all kinds of stuff and teach kids about the wonders of astronomy. It's kind of interesting once you get into astronomy, there's tendrils that reach out everywhere. Um, I work with the uh, Mathacton School District as the planetarium director. I've been with Rittenhouse now some six years working as their astronomer and their educational outreach. I worked for the New Jersey State Museum for 10 years as a planetarium lecturer. The top that I've reached in my field is being a lecturer at the Hayden Planetarium. I would say the big bright thing in the sky we hope to get to see every day is sun. So I've been doing solar astronomy uh, for many years and I like being in the sun and I have equipment to look at it safely and I um, enjoy it a whole lot. Okay, there was a little boy named Leo who was very disruptive in class. And, you know, it's spring, so Leo's in the sky, so of course I was going to mention Leo. And when the show was over, a little boy came back and talked to me, and he had very intelligent questions about the Big Bang, about planets. And then the teacher came over and said, come on, Leo, it's time to go. And we, we decided that we found something that he was interested in. When I was trying to describe that belt we see in the sky, the three stars, I said that it comes around every year at this time of the year. Cold weather brings this belt high in the sky. Who could it be? And the kids yelled out, Santa Claus. I realized, wow, <laughs> they see things that I didn't see at all. I was really impressed. We changed Santa into Orion the Hunter that night. Uh, well, one of my favorite things when I'm teaching people astronomy, specifically when I'm showing people uh, the sky through the telescope for the first time, but my favorite is Saturn because Everybody, I found, responds exactly the same way the first time they see Saturn. And I, I, think it's, uh, I think this response must actually be built into our DNA and part of what makes us human. Everyone says, it looks like it's painted on there. That was the first thing I said, and uh, everyone I've ever shown Saturn to, that's their first response. When I first came to Rittenhouse, they were meeting in the Fells Planetarium. I had gone to the Fells Planetarium as a child and realized, my gosh, this is a way I can get a free star show every month by coming to this astronomy group. I thought it was well worth the $20 fee. I signed up and they discovered I was a teacher. It didn't really take long before I was moved from the audience up to the stage and was used to help instruct people about astronomy. I've been teaching with the Rittenhouse group ever since. I got involved with the Rittenhouse as a planetarium console operator where I work part-time for the Franklin Institute and the Fells Planetarium. 
and once in a while I'd be asked to substitute for some of the other operators like Denise and I got involved that way and of course they always had interesting content so I kept showing up even if I wasn't working the console and here I am today. I'd like Rittenhouse to continue in its education mission. For a while we didn't really have an idea where we're going. Uh, Rittenhouse in the 1960s changed their mission statement to be one of education, to bring this science to the public. I'd like to grow that mission, I'd like to keep on doing more education, and I'd like to do some educational outreach like we're going to do this year at the Philadelphia Science Festival. If you do have at least a beginning interest in astronomy, uh, to come to these and talk to the people either before the meetings or after the meetings that can guide you with, if it's a instrument, a telescope, a pair of binoculars you're looking to get, if it's looking uh, in the sky and trying to figure out which bright point of light is which by name, uh, but talk to the people behind the scenes and they can usually steer you in the right direction. Rittenhouse has been an incredible experience. I've met some really neat presenters from all over the astronomy community, amateurs, professionals. I've gone on neat field trips to telescopes and observing sites. And I show up because every time I learn something. I think it's not only a privilege, but an honor to be able to be selected to talk in such a prestigious facility. So I think I'm just starting to learn that I'm at the top of my game.